so let's move ahead to the next problem the batch printing problem now uh, this scenario is not common it's not a very common occurring kind of scenario but yes when they occur uh, what developers do is they put a lot of if condition they put a lot of hacks around you know they make a some kind of a work around and they solve the problem but definitely you know that's not a way to uh, solve the solution and uh, eventually what happens is you end up with a bad architecture so let's try to understand this problem first you know by a scenario and then we'll see that how we can fix the problem so here's the scenario so here's the application which describes the scenario it's a simple customer batch printing application so what you can do here is basically you can go and select the type of customer and you can add customers uh, to the list so for example let's say okay there's a paid customer uh, with name shiv and he has paid me 100 amount i will add it once you add right it gets added to a data grid into a collection okay in the same way i can go and add uh, like a gold customer must be again uh, let's say raju and i'll say you know 120 and add customer uh, then i'll say okay must be add one more up uh, inside a paid customer uh, saying sham and something else and i'll say add so in this way i can go and add uh, customers into collection here and later what i can do is i can go and print all these customers uh, you know using this print all button so if when i hit the print all button what it does is it actually goes and it prints uh, you know the the customer name and what kind of type it is uh, you know into a list box and definitely this this whole thing is then sent to a printer so it's a basically a batch printing application where you go and you add different types of customers and then basically you can hit the print all button to take a print out of all these customers so now let's look at the behind code let's look at the code what uh, code on which the application runs and then we'll try to understand the problem now if you look at the code uh, let me just separate this stop this now if you look at the code right uh, the code is pretty decent here uh, what we have done is basically uh, for each one for each customer type we have created separate classes so you can see that for gold customer type there is a separate class for paid customer type there is a separate class so for each customer there is a separate class and all of these classes actually inherit from a abstract class from a common abstract class and the abstract class the, the functions and the methods and the signature of the abstract class are forced by a interface so at the top of you know the hierarchy we have a interface called as i customer which actually says that every customer type in this application you know should have a customer name should have a amount and should have a print function the abstract class goes and it adds uh, some functionality to the interface you know uh, to the interface uh, blank definitions so you can see that it it actually allocates functionality like setting and getting the customer name setting and getting the customer amount but then it says you know what the print should be implemented by by the individual customer types because we don't know what they exactly want to print and then at the bottom line we have the concrete customer type which actually go and uh, inject their own implementation so for example you can see that the gold customer type is is having its own implementation in the same way you can see that the paid customer type is having its own implementation so at the top of the hierarchy we have an interface then we have an abstract class which actually implements the interface and then finally at the bottom we have uh, you know new uh, we have classes for each customer type and they uh, basically go and override or you know they basically go and define the print implementation for the for the classes so a very decent uh, hierarchy and, and very decent uh, class structure we have here now this complete class code that is the interface code the abstract class code uh, the concrete customers you know all are contained into a separate class library called as the customer project and this customer project is then referenced in a different project which has our user interface as we have seen in the demo that you know we have a <clears throat> we had a simple customer screen and uh, there was a add customer button here so this add customer button what it does is it actually goes and adds the customer uh, you know to a list of i customers so this uh, this i customer collection is is nothing but it's a form level variable it's a class level variable and whenever you hit the add customer button it actually goes and adds the customer object to this list and then later this list is binded to the data source to the data grid so if you remember in the form design at the right hand side there is a data grid and then when anybody hits this print all button what it does is it actually goes and loops through that i customer interface collection and basically just calls a print method now if you remember this print method over here is you know it's it's a compulsion which is given by the i customer to all of its 
classes below. So the gold customer has to implement the print function. The paid customer has to implement the print function. So it just loops through this generic collection of I customer and calls the print function. So that's how this project actually functions currently. Now one fine day, you get some additional requirements. Your project currently supports two kinds of customer types. One is a paid customer type and the other one is a gold customer type and they both implement the print functionality. Now let's say you get one more requirement where the customer says that please go and add a new customer type to this project called as a free customer type. And this free customer should not be allowed to print. In other words, nobody should be able to invoke the print function on the free customer classes. Right. So what do you do? So definitely, you know, you already have the class structure at place. So what you will do is you will go to your class and you will say, okay, very easy. The way I have independent classes for gold customer and paid customer, I'm going to add one more class here called as the free customer class. So let's type public class free customer customer abstract inherit from the abstract class. Now if you try to build this project, you will see that it says that please go and implement the print function. Why? Because it is defined as an abstract member here. Now if you look at your requirement, what it says is that please do not provide any implementation for the print. Now you are in a dilemma. You know, as per the requirement, you should not provide any implementation. But then because this is the abstract method, you have to implement it. So what you will do is probably the best way is let's go and implement that abstract method and we'll throw up a error saying that not implemented exception. In other words, we are saying here that I'm not going to implement any kind of implementation here. So anybody who calls this print function will get up an error. So this is, you know, the way you have done it. So right. So pretty much now it meets your requirement. Paid customer should print. Yes, it prints. Gold customer should print. Yes, it prints. The free customer should not print. Should It should not have any implementation. So you have thrown up a not implemented exception here. Now let's build this project. Now definitely you also need to consume this logic in the UI. So what you'll do is the first thing is you will go to the combo box and you will add a type here called as a free customer. Nice. And uh, you know in the change event you will say that okay if the selected index is equal to 2 that's the last one. Please create an object of free customer. Nice. Again, this can always be improved by using factory patterns, you know, which I'm not covering here currently. So if you see the, the previous scenario where I've discussed about factory patterns, it would, it would give you example. It would give you a, a, a way, you know, of how to do it. So currently, you know, this complete if condition can be avoided if you use factory patterns here, if you want to, which I'm not doing currently. So currently I'm just hard coding the actual classes here. So I'm saying, okay, if the customer, uh, if the combo box selected is second in the list, please go and create a free customer object. Keyboard. Nice. So everything good here till now. We have implemented a new class. We have inherited it. We have written the logic uh, in the UI to consume this free customer class. Now what we'll do is let's go and run this project. So I'm going to say F5. And now let's start adding new customer types in the collection. So let me add a paid customer type. Shiv. Well, add customer. Let me add a gold customer type. 100. 12. Let's see. Raju. 12. Add customer. Let me add a free customer type here. You know, XYZ. Saying 111. Add customer. And now let's try to invoke the print function. Now the time I invoke the print function, you can see that, you know, it's throwing up an exception here saying that you, you know, you cannot call the print method, print method of the free customer and your for loop, right? Which actually goes and calls up the collection, uh, you know, in the I customers to call on the print function has no idea that this customer type is a free customer or a gold customer. So what eventually happening is what's, what's happening here is basically it's a generic customer collection, right? So the UI is just going and calling print, print, print. But the time it comes to the free customer, he's crashing. Now, what do we do? One way of thinking would be that, uh, why don't we just go and delete this so that there is no exception raised. Now, must be this is fine. You know, this is okay. Must be I'll just see over here, return, nothing. 
something like this. Must be, you know, this hack is okay. This kind of a thing is okay. But then what it means is that your print function is there, but it is not doing anything. So again, it's not a proper uh, solution. Must be it's a workaround solution. So how do we address this problem? Now, you know, there can be other categories of developers, you know, who can say that how about writing a if condition here? In other words, how about putting a if condition like this? Saying that if the customer type is not a free customer, do not invoke the print function. Easy, right? But let's say that, you know, we have, let's say that the customer says to add one more customer type called as not paid customers. The customers who have actually not paid the amount that we should not be able to print those type of customers. So again, you have to put one more and condition here or a or condition, I will say rather, you know, where he says, okay, if it's a free customer or it is a not paid customer, do not print. So again, the solution is again a hack. It is not a solution which can scale uh, further. So again, coming to the same point, what is wrong over here and how can we solve this problem in a proper manner?